Okay, welcome to our evening session. To start with our usual prayer, read and follow. Anando Pramhe Divya Janat Anando Anando Dheva Anando Dheva Kalvimani Bhutani Jayante Kalvimani Bhutani Jayante Jatani Divanti Purandam Prayanti Abhisham Vishanti Abhisham Vishanti Aruni Vidya Aruni Vidya Pratishthita Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om that bliss is Brahman and it is from bliss all creation is born and when born they all leave using bliss and into bliss at the time of dissolution they all enter Shrishti Thite Laya everything occurs in bliss bliss is that all pervasive consciousness and this is the wisdom taught by Varuna and learned by Bhrugu when Bhrugu learned this he got established in that wonderful state of silence the bliss is silence, silence is bliss, he stayed in the bliss. That is the beautiful verse of the Aitri Upanishad. We started off with a very vital question that arose in the mind of Sri Rama. It has been brought forth in Yoga Vasishta in the first chapter. First chapter is called Vairagya Prakarna. So Rama had gone, completed his education, went from a nice pilgrim with all his family and friends and enjoyed the whole thing and then came back. When he came back, then he went into such depth questions. You know? So he had no answer. He went into a non-active phase, vacuum in life. Well, there is no meaning in life. You know. He got disinterested in everything. So, people ask whether he went into depression. So, what is the difference between depression and the state Rama went called Vairagya? We saw depression is a mental health disorder. What characterizes this? Persisting feeling of sadness, hopelessness, loss of interest or pleasure in activities once enjoyed and prepared to commit suicide, you don't want to leave anymore. It's a disorder, mental disorder. Well, Vairagya is a state that arises when we have very deep questions fundamental questions. What is the question Rama got into? What is the meaning of this life? When he got that thing, he went on analyzing, very deep analysis on all aspects of life. In Vairagya Prakarna, he describes how this life has no meaning. 
all the different aspects starting from our birth komarya then we get youthful period and then we become the prahasthas and then court ward and everything right from birth till the death everything he analyzes in great detail and he finds there is no meaning in this thing so he gets into this phase of dispassion not interested in anything at all so he get detached he is not interested in any worldly aspect at all even in eating talking to people and walking doing anything absolutely no this was the result of deep quest of the meaning of life that arose in the life of shri rama rama's question centered around meaning of life look at our souls we all take birth grow from childhood get educated probably get a job start earning good money one more and more money then probably you start getting married and produce children and get old one day we die is this all to life what is this meaning of this life in which we are all tailor made into this thing that's the question so since he did not have answer he could not get an answer he went into a state of vacuum emptiness this occurs almost in everyone's life every one of our lives at some stage in the beginning we are not bothered we are all involved in our activity and what course i have to do and what i have to do what job i will get how much money i can earn and whom i can marry and what property i can make all this thing going on and on it will be in the rigmarol and this dimension but when you reach at a stage then you start asking this meaning of life in the case of arjuna it was a different story it's a conflict between duty versus ethics and morality he has come to wage the war but when he sees his own kitan kin his own teacher dronacharya who made arjuna a arjuna and bhishmacharya who he revered the most is the role model of a person he has come in front of him he had to wage the war and kill them his heart beats with compassion love respect and surrender he says no 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 i should not do this and he has series of arguments arjuna vishada yoga in the first chapter in bhagavad gita what is to be done whether he should continue his duty as a warrior and wage the war kill the people win the war or so love and compassion sacrifice everything sacrifice sacrifice is most important leave everything give everything to them and then go away to himalayas or some isolated place which is better of the two both are good performing duty is good showing love compassion ethics morality sacrifice is equally good which is better of the two that the conflict which brought the whole knowledge base with solve such problem in our bhagavad gita whereas in rama's life it is the meaning of life so when the meaning of life comes then we have no answer so this actually state is the one that drives us to get at the higher wisdom base of our sanatana dharma the secret of life as rama found no answer the jaya sitting totally isolated dumbfounded then vishamitra has come he want to take both rama and lakshmana to protect his great yagna he is doing which is being spoiled by maracha subahu and other people who are coming and throwing the flesh and bones and everything into the yagna and then spoiling the yagna Vishamitra himself could have done, but when he sits in the yagna, he should not act. No, he should not curse anybody, and he should not get up of the things. Therefore, he wanted somebody to support. 
So he came to Dasharatha and asked, please send your two brilliant, younger and most wonderful children, Rama and Lakshmana. I want them to take. But then Dasharatha says, look at the stage of Rama. What is he doing? Absolute empty, vacuum. So Vishwamitra goes and talks to Sri Rama. Sri Rama gives a wonderful analysis of the whole life that I last time mentioned. You know? Vairagya Prakarna gives the whole chapter, the arguments that Rama gives as to why there is no meaning in life. It's all governed by the time and we are all robots and Things can happen and things like this thing. And therefore, it was absolutely dumbfounded. That which Mantra recognizes, he tells the Shatha, don't worry. It's not depression. It's a divine thing that is called Vairagya. Then Rama has to be brought back. Then he tells Rama, your stage is a right state to go beyond the normal rigmarole of the worldly aspects. You have to understand the higher wisdom of the entire creation and the whole consciousness. You have to learn. No? Don't think you are the only person. Everybody has. And he said, we had the great Shukha Maharshi, a very young man like you. He was also doing that. He also had his education and everything. Then he also got into the same problem. Then he came out of it. Was it uh, Vasa Maharshi? No. Came. And that's how it ends. No? Vishwamitra says, okay, Shuka came out like that, you are also going to come back. So you need that wisdom base. And the second chapter is called Mumuksha Prakarna. A person who wants to learn what is Moksha. What is beyond this entire physical world? What is beyond this physical body? Are there subtle bodies and causal bodies? Is there something beyond? What is it that we call as mind, emotions, intellect, everything? So that the mukshu, that is one who is desirous of getting to the muksha. You know, that is the second chapter of the Yoga Vasistha. You know. So then Rama asked, please, please tell me the great wisdom that Shuka got from his teacher and others. I also want to learn that thing. Oh, there's some hope. There's some real meaning to life, which I thought I did not. There is no meaning in life, I thought. But there's a big hope, I think. Then he asked Vishwamitra, please tell me. And Vishwamitra says, no, I am not going to tell. Your great master of masters is there. Brahmarshi Vasitta is there. And he will tell you all the things. So just like Bhagavad Gita came and the teaching of Krishna to Arjuna, came the great epic Yoga Vasitta by the teaching of Vasitta to Sri Rama. Rama is the disciple, Vasitta is the teacher. So, what is the secret that is unraveled? It's called Sanatana Dharma. It's an ancient science. You know? The modern science has dealt with this entire physical world. For 400 years we have unraveled everything about this physical world. What this entire world is made out of? Objects, physical things which are there, made out of molecules. Molecules made of atoms, protons, neutrons, fundamental particles. They are all made out of energy. So this entire physical world is nothing but energy, modern science has understood. Also modern science has understood what are the laws that govern them. Neutral laws of motion, called classical mechanics, and quantum mechanics, theory of relativity. Everything we have understood about the physical world. Anything therefore physical, we have very big success. Putting man on the moon, building skyscrapers, underwater tunnels, information technology, and all this technology that we are developing, AI and others, everything physical. Then modern science is going beyond the physical. 
we have to now move to understand what is next to the physical body. Is there something like a pranic body? What is it made out of? What is that we call as life? What do we call as prana? No. What is the difference between a dead body and a living body? In the living body, there is the prana. In the dead body, there is no prana. So what is that which we call as prana? Is it different from energy? Into that region of subtlety and causality, science has started moving. So our ancient masters, thousands and lakhs of years back, have understood the whole of this creation. And that is known as the ancient science. Ancient science is the most comprehensive science. And it is this science that is being unraveled in Bhagavad Gita, in Upanishads, in the Yoga Vasistha and others. Yoga Vasistha is the form of stories. You know. So Vasistha start talking about the dimension. He says, Rama, you have to recognize a fundamental drive in you. It is there in everybody, whether you know or not. So there's the aim in life, there's a goal in life. It's all knit into it. But you have not observed that. You have not looked at it. What is that? Sukha praptihi, dukkha nivrutihi. Everyone wants to get more and more happiness, more and more happiness, more and more happiness, moving towards higher happiness and bliss. And Avoid all pain, misery, stress, tension, diseases, everything. Operate. This has been built into us. If you observe carefully all voluntary and involuntary actions, it becomes very clear to you. Every action you do is to get more happiness. Why you want more money? You can have more comfortable living. And you think by having more comfort, more objects, more everything, you'll be more happy. Because we all think that happiness is an object of enjoyment. Hmm? When you look at the involuntary actions, it is to avoid all misery you know, and annihilation and death. You know? Why all involuntary actions are going on? To avoid the death. You know? Therefore, everything is geared to do these things. But we never analyzed. Our stars, Rama, please analyze, recognize. Go deeper, understand, understand, you know, what is the drive within you, why you have gone into this thing, you are suffering, you want to overcome that, you know, so you want to overcome that misery, pain, vacuum, the meaningless life, you know, so understand, there is a drive within you to get a more happiness. So, we went through the happiness analysis called the Ananda Bhimamsa, that's the subject in Upanishads and in Bhagavad Gita and everywhere. So, with the grandeur of uh, the Ananda Bhimamsa we studied earlier, we understood that happiness is not an object of enjoyment. Because the law of the senses with the sense objects follow what you call as law of diminishing returns. The first object of your choice gives you a lot of happiness, you are very happy. Second one, third one, fourth one goes on reducing. After some time, you start getting sick of it. And it leads to misery. You know? And it varies from person to person. What one person likes, another person doesn't like. And varies from one community to another community. And still we think that everything is in objects. What a big ignorance. So Vasita says, Rama, you see that. You, know? you all look outside. But it's inside. Happiness is inside. So by through the analysis that we performed last time, happiness analysis, Ananda Vimamsa, we came to know when there is a Vishaya Vishayi Sambhoga. What happens to the inner state? The mind goes into silence. For a very short period, you know, for a fraction of a second, the mind goes into silence. It is that moment of silence which is called as bliss. Rama, please recognize that. You know. Do the experiment. Rama starts sitting. The whole day is sitting, trying to see what is happening, his mind. 
and slowly over days and weeks he start finding this thing then the truth of happiness is in a state a brief silence you know so he analyzes each and every sense pressure vishay vishay samboga ice to sit there and then go on watching the infinite sky eyes merging with that infinite thing or oh, infinite ocean then we lose our self and the mind becomes silent that is eyes is this thing then we have the ears to hear wonderful music that you like you know in bangalore in karnataka subrakshmi is the master singer he is the greatest of the musical prodigy you know and when she sings we go into the ecstasy you know when you are hearing you are taken into such heights of ecstatic bliss the mind just goes into silence you know so you have your own choice of music when you do that you can get into that sense of touch embracing a child mothers you know going and then embracing the child with such happiness touch fantastic thing that comes then the husband and the wife when they have the sexual intercourse you know they have the highest bliss the mind goes into silence this forms the whole basis of tantra shastra that have been developed then eating gulab jamun rasgulla the taste you know all the five senses when the sense object comes in touch with the sense vishaya vishayi vishaya is the sense vishayi is the object when the two things join together there is something that remarkable happens that mind goes into silence that you have to recognize so rama if you recognize this thing you have resolved the aspect of happiness what is happiness you know so your mind is always in turmoil you are asking question 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 and you have analyzed such beautifully the whole life it is remarkable such brilliance you have but you never understood the secret you have to secret that understand how the mind goes into that silence that silence is ananda that the ananda mai kosha say so it is inner state of silence that comes so what is the objective you have to stay in that silence when you stay longer and longer in that silence will it become a boredom people who have done that they understand it's a law of increasing returns if you stay Two minutes, your happiness goes four times. If you stay three minutes, it will become nine times. If you stay four minutes, then it will become sixteen times. That's called exponential growth. So happiness goes on increasing tremendously. What happens not only in the brain, but the whole body starts experiencing. and every cell gets to the state of happiness that bliss there is going to be a metamorphic transformation that takes place in every cell. and things is that you are a changed person when you stay longer and longer you have understood the secret of happiness the bliss this is what you all will want unfortunately the secret this knowledge has been denied to all of us in our education system we never analyzed what is the happiness which you want what is the meaning of this life we never looked at that's what was it i telling to shri ramo so he stay there and ramo started staying in that silent silence that is a direction a knowledge given to go towards the mumukshatwa at the second chapter mukshatwa he says so 
what is the conclusion of that second series of his talks you know silence is bliss so all of you rama and all the people who are telling positive harmony says now you stay in that silence he was sitting in that silence everybody was made to stay in that silence you know and that is the dimension that's needed we had such examples you know ramana maharshi went into that silence stayed in that silence how long not one minute two minutes five minutes one day two days three days five days weeks of weeks months of months years of probably he stayed in that silence that is establishing in that ananda maya kosha that the dimension that comes so rama start getting established in that silence but naturally he gets a doubt you know staying in silence is the goal why should i do any activity at all you know yes shuka he reached that state of silence you may call it as realization realization of the truth realization of the sanatana dharma but later on to the great maharshi he did so many activities you no know? how can he do activity you know what about activity so are you telling that i should sit in silence and in that state of blissful things and do no activity at all what is the point how did shuka live his life he says arjun also has the similar question krishna you are telling you how to stay in that samadhi sthiti but people who are established in that samadhi called samadhi stha so what is the way that they live how do they talk how do they walk how do they eat how do they transact how do we do activities he is asking tata pragnasya ka bhasha samadhistasya keshava tata dikyam prabhasheta kimasita prajeta kim he said you know so then the example is told i think i narrated you the story of shuka which continue i think all of you remember you know the story how many of you remember the story how shuka understood the higher dimension hmm? i will repeat to you because it's worth you know shuka marshi got all the knowledge from his father vyas marshi but then he was not satisfied if silence is the ultimate how can i do any activity and whether i have read that state of immense happiness bliss of silence then rasmarshi says okay you go to janaka maharaj so he sent him to janaka janaka was a paramagnani he was a great accomplished master like vasishta vishwamitra and others and he could see that vyasa has sent shuka to him and now he has to test him how to test you know so he tells the people there in the security guard this young lad is going to come there when he comes make him sit there and tell that janaka is very busy and wait here he is going to come you know and don't care for him you know and let us see what he does so shuka is asked and he sits there calmly his mind is at that silent this for love one day over two days three days four days nobody is caring for him you no know? and janaka is not coming full week he sitting there in the state of wonderful blissful happiness you know? what normally would happen if he had not reached that state of blissful silence that realized state is he go would have come you see i'm satarishi i've come here 
this Janaka is treating so badly, you know, and I'm going to curse them. All types of anger is going to come. Jalati will come. But Shuka absolutely is silent. No. Waiting is a test for your control over the mind. No. When you're waiting for the bus, you want to catch a bus and it has to come at 10 o'clock, but it again delayed, delayed. Something has happened. And 10 5, 10 10, you are burning inside. What is happening? What is happening? Why? And you start talking all nonsense and talking to other people. What the system it is this? And bus will not come. See, Japan, how wonderfully they do that in India. It is delayed, delayed, delayed. Everything is delayed. In Japan, if the train comes one minute late, they are going to return the money. Exactly in time it comes. That's how it should be. But tea, what is happening? You're burning in waiting. That is the test when you have the control over the mind, when you have the mastery over the mind, when you have the mastery to stay in that silence and any situation. For one full week, he was in that wonderful state of bliss. You know, he was not at all worried that Janaka has not come, Janaka has not regarded him, and Janaka is not going good food and is not taking care of me. Absolutely dispatched, absolutely unattached. He was in the full state of Ananda Mai Kosha. Ananda, Ananda. Then Janaka recognized, yes, now he has passed the first step. Then he comes there, you know, it's all big not big drama, you know. Come on, come on, Shukaji. I'm so sorry I could not come because I got involved in so many activities, what to do, what to do. So you must be suffering, suffering for so long. I don't know whether somebody take care of you or not, whether you got proper food or not. Because say, oh, I'm fine, I'm wonderful, absolutely no problem, sir. Then he takes and Janaka makes a big show of people coming with a trumpet and then Jai Jai Kaur, Shuka Jai Karka, Jai 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 Shuka, and all these things. It's a lot of praise and everything and takes him to a very beautiful palatial place with all the comforts and with all the food and everything. And Shuka is made to stay there. Come on, one week you have been staying there with uncared thing. Now you will have all the luxury supply here. You know? And whatever you want to enjoy and stay here. And I will come back. Shuka now sitting. And he had all the luxuries. The best of the five star or superstar thing. Everything there. And wonderful thing to eat, music, dance, drama, women, everything there, you know. But what was they doing? What he was staying in that security place, he was sitting there in that blissful awareness. He was not drawn by any of the sense pleasures. Because he knew the sense pleasures are very small bits of this thing which takes you to silence. Our time in that wonderful silence, all the time in that silence. That blissful awareness. One day, two days, three days, four days, five days, with all types of luxuries and everything. Shuka was in that blissful awareness. He never reacted to anything. He never involved in any of the things, and he was sitting there. One full week. Then Jaraka comes. Yes, now we have passed the test. So you are a gnani, you are a chitta pragna. You have realized the truth. You have realized the truth that bliss is your causal state. You are established in the bliss. That is what is called as nana. So you have a sthita pragnatva. Therefore, I certify that you are a gnani. You are an accomplished master. You know, I say, these are the two tests. One, when you are waiting, whether your mind can be calm, quiet, silent. When you are Push to all types of sense pressures, but still you understand that bliss is much, much higher and stay in that blissful state. These are two tests. Then Shuka gets confirmation of whatever so much he said. Then also is confirming. But he gets a question, you know, like Rama gets. You know. Then Maharaji, I have a question for you. you know. So I'm a mendicant. 
I have no responsibility. I have no power, nothing, and I will just go around and stay in that silence any length of time. But you, you are a Chakravarti, you are an emperor. You have to rule the whole world. Problems of problems. Hundreds and thousands of problems are coming. And everybody is throwing stones and big bats and everything. And you have to solve so many problems from morning till night. 24 hours is not enough for you. How do you maintain that silence? What is the way of doing these things? Please let me know that secret. No? That's the one he says. No? So, what Janaka said, remember, he gives a beautiful wick, oil wick lamp, and tells Sukha to take this thing and go around this entire palace, you know, and come back. Condition, your wick, your lamp should not get extinguished. That's the condition. So context, the son watching, going all the way and seeing that with absolute concentration, the wick is not extinguished. You know? Nowadays we see some of you, some of the yoga masters and practitioners, they put a thing on this thing and they do all the yoga asanas, you know, nicely. And wonderfully, without getting it extinguished. So, Janaka asks, wonderful, wonderful. You had perfect concentration. And you were able to see that your wig doesn't get extinguished. Your success, good. But now, can you tell me what was happening there? Can you see what was happening there? This side? That side? What? No, no, all my things are only in the week I was doing. Okay, now you go. This time you should not only see that your week doesn't get extinguished, but you must get all the details. Any detail I ask, you should be able to tell. Oh, then it takes that. Comes back. And because what is happening there, you will explain. Every detail he has got. But we cannot extinguish. How did you do that? One portion of your mind is all the time attentive not to extinguish the flame. Other mind is catching. He said, this is what I do. This action in silence. It's a special way of doing. Yogastaha Kuru Karmani Sangante Twadhandaya Siddhya Siddhyo Samo Bhutva Samatvam Yoga Vichate Krishna has told that. Sri Rama is telling to Vasita is telling to Sri Rama. This is what you have to do. You are getting established in that silence, in that blissful awareness. But retaining that blissful awareness, you should be able to go around and do all activities and to perform all your duties. It's a dual mode operation. This is the key essence of the higher aspect of yoga. Normally our mind gets completely involved in action. That's what we do. But here, no. You have the inner mind and you have the outer mind. Karmani akarmaya kvashyet. Akarmani chakarmaya. As Krishna has said. So, Shukha's realization was, now I understood, Derek Maharaj, how you do that. You are acting in the blissful awareness all the time in that inner bliss. Even when you are sleeping, inner layer of the mind is in that blissful awareness. And your body may be sleeping, everything. That's the dimension that comes. So, this helps you to move we were normally able to greater and greater heights. You are moving from Annamaya Kosha to the higher levels, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vignana, Anandamaya Kosha. Attune to that self to do these things. So this is one transformation that takes place. So when you start moving from selfishness to selflessness, 
this new dimension start coming up. So what is the goal of life? To be happy all the time, be in that blissful awareness and do any activity. Pashyam shunvam prasham digram arshnam gacchan sopan shosan pralapan visrujan grunhan unvishan nimishan api indriyan indriyar teshu vartanta yiti dharayan Krishna said, seeing, talking, hearing, eating, excreting, urinating, walking, jumping, thinking, Every action you are doing in that blissful awareness. No? That is the state of Ananda Vaikosha. You are establishing the Ananda Vaikosha and doing the activities. You know, inner layer of the mind and outer layer of the mind. And this is the dimension that has been brought forth. And Sri Rama is wonderfully you know, happy about this thing. So the secret that we all have to understand is to get to the state of silence. Everybody must do the practice. Morning, when you get up, as soon as you get up, remember. Pratasmarami hrudi Satchit sukham paramaham sagatim turiyam Yat sapna jagara sushuptim avaiti nityam Tad brahma nishkara maham na jabhuta sangha Pratasmarana, as soon as you get up, remember our ananda my portion. My real thing is that ananda, that silence, that calmness, that peace, that tranquility. Throughout the day, I will maintain that smile on the face. I maintain that ananda. I am, life is full of bliss, ananda, that silence. That is the thing you start off. Then you start practicing your asanas, pranayama, mudras, pandhas, meditations, everything you are doing. Everywhere, what is the thing? Ananda samapatti. What Patnali has said. What is the goal of the asanas that you do? Thira sukham asanam. What is that sukha? Ananta samapatti. Prayatna shaitilya ananta samapatti bhyam. So you must stay in that thing. Continue. With a smile on the face. You are doing your pranayama. Breathing great is becoming slower and slower. Silence. And wonderfully the mind goes into that silence. And ananda comes. So in every practice of yoga that you do, your mind should go to that silence. Meditation you are doing, dhyana. Om, 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 Om. And you become one with that Om. Completely silent. So every practice of yoga, every technique of yoga is to take you to that silence. Why that silence? Because Ananda. The whole essence of yoga, according to Patnari, is Chitta Vritti Nirodha. Going into that thing. And Chitta Vritti Nirodha comes what? Tava Drashtuho Swarupya Avasthanam. So you go into that Swarup. What is that Swarupa? Silence, calmness, peace, tranquility. Infinite bliss, infinite knowledge, infinite power, infinite freedom is the ultimate that we want. So this is the whole essence of this thing. So you are moving from selfishness towards selflessness. From the focusing to the deep focusing. From the limited to the unlimited. On increasing, increasing, increasing. In dharana, you are focusing. In dhyana, you are deep focusing. In samadhi, you expand. You know. So, silence, state of silence. Is the one that to do. But that silence is not a single state. No. That silence, the state of bliss, is not a single state. No. 
it goes on expanding expanding various layers of silence as you go to higher and higher layers of silence you have more and more bliss you know and our ancient masters were such great scientists they were able to measure everything you know? just like we measure everything today quantification is the key essence of scientific growth similarly our ancient masters also knew how to measure everything so is it ever possible to measure bliss how can you measure you know it's a feeling how can you measure if it is external object thing you can measure you know so how do you measure anything suppose you want to measure the width of this stage you know? what do you do you bring a meter tape or a yard thing and then you measure so to measure anything you must define one unit initially so we all at some stage we define that this length is 1 meter we all accepted at that time we had accepted like this one this can be also called as 1 meter it is arbitrarily we all accepted that this is 1 meter and the atp conditions in england in a particular day you measure this thing and fix this thing this is 1 meter we fixed no. then subdivisions and expand everything can meter similarly time one tick tick the clock that is 1 second so to measure anything you must first define what is one unit therefore to measure happiness to measure bliss to measure ananda you must define what is one unit of ananda how to define they all sat together and defined they defined what is the maximum happiness a person can get a physical person as we all are there with the sense pressure what is the maximum happiness he can get that can be called as one unit they said called manusha ananda what is that yava syat sadhu yava dhyayaka ashishto dradishto parishtah tasya yam pradave sarva vittasya purna syat sayeko manusha ananda six characters so imagine a young person yava full of energy what are it yava dhyayaka is a worshipper of youthful energies is full of desire. I I I want 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 to 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 enjoy enjoy life. have have all types of 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 everything and I want to enjoy. Full of desire. You know, you desire. Then if you don't have the strength, you are not fickle minded. You have the full willpower. You have the full thing. Yes, I am going to enjoy to the maximum. I can eat 48 grams of diamonds. I can eat hundred gulab jamuns. You have this thing. No, dradishtaha, balishtaha. You have the strength, physical strength and vitality. You have got all these things. You may have all the things. If it doesn't have the money, if it doesn't have the source, what is going to happen? Yam prithvi sarva vitta sya purna syaat. He is an emperor with all riches of the whole universe. What Alexander wanted, I want to be the chakravarti of the whole world. He wanted. So imagine such a person who has got all the wealth of the world, every way I can. Then imagine how much happiness he can get, how much of ananda he gets. Yam the sarva vitya, say eko manusha ananda. That is one unit of ananda. How do you get this? Right here. If you make your mind silent and stay in that silence for longer and longer time, you get the Tananda. What a Chakravarti with all these things, six things, whatever happiness he gets, you can get right here by making your mind silent. One level of silence. Then he says, Te ye shatam manusha ananda ha 
hundred times in Sananda. No? In the next Paranamai Kosha, he could take. No? Tayeko Manushya Gandharvanam Anandaha. So in the Paranamai Kosha, the first layer, that thing in which the Prana thing happens, is called Manushya Gandharva. Gandharvas. Gandharvas, Yakshas, Kinaras are all in the Pranamaya Kosha, Pranic world. And their Ananda is 100 times more of this Manusha Ananda. That is Manusha Gandharva. Then, how do you get that Ananda? Shrotriyasya Chaka Mahatasya. A person who understands that bliss is silence and who stays in that silence for longer and longer time and more and more expanded time, he will get that Ananda right here, he says. Then after Manusha Gandharva Ananda next, Teye Shatam Manusha Gandharva Ananda Sayeko Deva Gandharva Ananda Deva Gandharva, Manusha Gandharva, then 100 times more Ananda is Deva Gandharva. That Ananda you can get right here. By doing what? Staying in that wonderful state of silence for longer and longer time. One hour staying that. Five hours staying in that. Ten hours staying there. Hundred times that. Staying in that, you get that Ananda right here. One hour she stayed in that silence for days and weeks and months and years. What happened if you would have gone? For like that, it goes on and on. Ananda measure. So like that, go on in feeling. Teye Shatam Deva Gandharvana Mananda Ha. Taye Ko Pitranan Chiraloka Loka Na Mananda Ha. Pitraloka. Pitraloka is next to the Gandharva Loka. Their Ananda is hundred times more than the Deva Gandharva Ananda. When we all go, when we die, invariably we go to the Pitraloka. You know, crossing the Gandharva Roka go there. So what is our Ananda? Turn to the power of six times. One followed by six zeros. The maximum happiness you can get, you can get there. Like that it goes on. Of the Pranamaya Kosha, you got the Manomaya Kosha. There you have got several layers. And Manomaya Kosha, you got the Vignanamaya Kosha. There's the Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, all these things. Finally, in this thing, 10 to the power of 20 times Ananda is Ananda Maya Kosha. You know? Nananda Maya Kosha is in the state of absolute. 10 to the power of 20 times the Ananda that you can get. So there are layers and layers and layers of silence. We have to go further into this. Now when you want more and more happiness, you, know, you all go to deeper and deeper silence and expanded silence and longer and longer duration. You know, and staying longer and going in deeper dimension. No. So this is the whole secret that has been unraveled. Vasita says, this is the progress that you have to go to the higher levels. No. So that is in the Utpatti Prakarana, he talks about these dimensions, you know. So Utpatti Prakarana is the next one. No. So he gives various examples. Just like Shukamarshi thing he gave, you know, he talks about Chikitvada and Chudala. Very wonderful story. You know, several pages and pages. It's such a fascinating story. And I heard, I was really thrilled when I heard that story. Vasita is number of stories. How the different people went into higher and higher heights. How they have unraveled the mysteries. Everything has been put. Then the story of Ahalya. All of you heard. How Ahalya went into that deep silence. He became stone-like, you know, unmoving for years and years and years, decades, until Rama comes and wakes her up. He comes back. Ahalya story. Then we heard the story of Leela. It's the most fascinating and most puzzling story. The Queen Leela's tale. How oh, she was very loving the husband, and both of them are living long, but Husband dies. So Leela wants to find out where he is. You know? And she starts exploring and going into the deeper dime and goes into the Manomaya Kosha where 
her husband is there. Very fascinating story. Then we have the story of Karkati. You know. She is a Rakshasa. She is a demoness. She wants to eat and eat and eat. Everything she wants to eat. Nothing she wants to leave. And how she transforms herself into the higher heights of realization. Then we have the story of Gaudhi. The story revolves around sage Vishwamitra. His father is Gaudhi, who experiences a series of extraordinary visions and realizations about the nature of reality, leading it to enlightenment, the highest heights. Then Uddhalaka, the story of the sage Uddhalaka and his son, Shweta Ketu, who are both seekers of knowledge, and Uddhalaka instructs his son about the ultimate truth through various analogies and examples. So that way, Yoga Vasitta, this Brahad Yoga Vasitta is fantastic, wonderful story. And every story drives you to understand the deeper dimension of the Sanatana Dharma. So we are going to continue this in the next Saturday, Yoga Vasitta dimension. Today we understood that there are layers and layers of bliss. Each layer of bliss has an expanded dimension, 100 times expansion and 100 times time reduction, 100 times bliss. Then layers, each layer is like a quantum jump, like an electron jump from one orbit to the next orbit, next orbit, next orbit. There is more and more energy in the whole dimension that starts coming up. So that is the dimension that we see. And with that, we will close today's dimensions about things and we have how much time now we have only three minutes. three minutes we have you know so you can take any of these questions they have put here nothing thing so there is one question that i put forth you know so we are in the grip of tamas and rajas we have all types of people around us and we have to react in which way we should react and do actions to master over our mind. That is the question that has been put forth here by one of the students from YIC, I think. Yes. And it's a good question. You know? So we encounter various types of people in front of us. So how do we react? So the implication of today's talk and the bliss is you have to maintain your blissful awareness. Maintain your blissful awareness and do any activity that you want. So when you reach this height, you have to overcome your tamas rajas and go even beyond sattva. So you have to shatter our tamas, control our rajas, and promote our sattva, become greater and greater human beings. Morning I told you the wonderful example of the gardener and his daughter, how he was able to sacrifice everything, surplusness. So he was on doing, bringing the sattva. And in the sattva dimension you go to the higher levels, the beyond the guna, that is dual mode operation, as I told. So, when you do that, then you raise to greater and greater height. You are only time in bliss, blissful awareness and doing these things. I mean, how can we reduce our excitement while we are practicing happiness? Excitement is often good to enjoy life and have the excitement at the same time you expand, slow down, sublimation. When you slow down, then excitement turns itself into peaceful, expanded, blissful awareness. And that is the dimension that we have to take further. And this is how we continuously grow. With that, we'll close today's session. And there is one more question here. Difference between layers of bliss in the is the same as different stages of Samadhi explained by Maharishi Patanjali. Correct. There are the different layers and these are the layers which Patanjali talks as different Samadhi. Eight types of Samadhi Patanjali streamlines. 
he systematized the whole set of this thing. Just like here, you have got 10 layers of bliss. There are eight layers of samadhi that Patanji has given. So there is a lot of similarity between the two things. So as we go to the higher and higher levels of samadhi, higher and higher of silence, the bliss increases. Along with the increase in bliss, there is also the power increases, your knowledge increases, and your freedom increases. All oh, this goes on increasing, and ultimately you reach infinite, infinite bliss, infinite knowledge, infinite power, infinite freedom. That is the moksha, ultimate. That's infinite. And you go on increasing, increasing, increasing. Patanji called it as ultimately the kaivalya. In this thing is called moksha. That's our we own the Ananda Maya Kosha. We own the five Koshas. You go into our original city called the Atma city. That's the main thing that has come. Good question. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santo Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Mahakati Dukkha Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Thank you all. Namaste. We'll meet next Saturday. Not there. For those people who, if you are not going to be here, by I see another, you can always come on online. We can share with you the link. Wherever you are, you can join me for doing this. Morning we have, evening we have. Everything. No? Welcome. Thank you. Because somebody asked question. What happens if you go away after YIC for this thing? You, know? you are part of the bigger family. You are welcome. Like many people are joining like this from all over the world. You got people from United States, New Zealand, this and that everywhere. All over the world they are joining. That's why we have morning and the evening both we have put. Some people find it easier to join the morning our time and evening their time. Thank you all. Thank you, Guruji. Namaste. Thank you, Guru Nutan. So nice.